Yep, looking good. Hmm, I'm getting hungry. Maybe Sophie will bring me some ribs for lunch. Mm -mm. Being an astronaut is cool, but they don't get fresh barbecue. Working on the ground does have some perks. Oh, hey there, I'm Zach, ground systems technician with the LEGO space team. I was just doing a little walkthrough here, checking on the launch site. I keep a close eye on all the equipment, systems, and facilities we use to assemble, transport, and launch rockets like the SLS and spacecrafts like the Orion that are being used for Artemis 1. And I know, I know, spacecraft and rockets are awesome, but as part of ground systems, I get to play, <clears throat> work, with a lot of other really cool equipment too, like the crawler transporter. What's the crawler? Oh, you know, just a 6.6 .6 million pound vehicle that moves the entire mobile launcher with the SLS rocket stacked on top of it. This thing can transport up to 18 million pounds. Just to paint you a picture, that's like 20 fully loaded 777 airplanes. And I know Dr. Jenny mentioned this to you, but I'm going to say it again. This thing is bigger than a baseball field. Don't worry, with all that size and weight, it still moves at a blazing, um, one mile per hour speeds. Okay, so it's slow, but it has to safely transport its precious cargo. And that's just one part of what we do in ground systems. Check out this video of some of NASA's exploration ground systems team doing what they do best. Huh? Huh? What did I tell you? Awesome. Like I said, being on the ground at NASA is pretty cool too. Just ask my friend Daniel Flores. Daniel is a test director for NASA's Exploration Ground Systems Program at Kennedy Space Center. Someone has to plan and execute all the testing that has to be done on the different systems, equipment, and processes used to launch the Artemis 1 mission. And Daniel, well, he's just the person for the job. In fact, why don't I let him tell you about it? Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. I'm part of the Exploration Ground Systems Program. Our mission is to transform the Space Center into a spaceport that can handle different kinds of rockets and spacecrafts. How are we going to do that? Well, we're upgrading the crawlers, the launch pad, and mobile launcher, and the vehicle assembly building, and even the firing room the launch control team operates from. As a child, I always dreamt about being an astronaut. When I was seven, my parents brought me to the NASA's Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex for the very first time. I remember seeing that vehicle assembly building in the distance, and I always dreamt about being able to go in and see how they built and prepared a rocket ahead of launch. Well, now I'm here, and I'm working with a team that's building and integrating ahead of the Artemis 1 launch. Beginning my career with NASA, I attended the University of Central Florida and I pursued a bachelor's degree in aerospace engineering. Later, I attended Florida Institute of Technology and I obtained a master's degree in space systems. Well, here we are now and I have the opportunity to work on one of the largest rockets ever built. Before becoming a NASA test director, I had the opportunity to work as a guidance navigation and control engineer early during the Artemis program. 
During that time, I helped develop the software and the procedures that are going to be used by the launch control team in support of the Artemis 1 launch. Before that, I had the opportunity to work as a space shuttle systems engineer in the hydraulic subsystem. As a junior engineer, I was a member of the launch control team, which had always been a dream of mine. I remember sitting in that firing room, looking at the countdown clock, waiting for it to arrive at T-0. I would watch closely at my displays, looking out at all the measurements, so I could make sure I could give the final go for launch for my system. As a NASA test director, I have the opportunity to work with many different people and many different systems at the NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Part of my job responsibility includes developing the plans, the procedures, and finally executing the tests that are required to be performed prior to launching the Artemis 1 mission. These tests may include powering up the rocket and the spacecraft for the very first time, or fueling the rocket at the launch pad just prior to launch. One of my main responsibilities includes transporting the SLS rocket, the Orion spacecraft, the mobile launcher, on top of the crawler transporter to the launch pad to get us ready for launch. So Zach, I hear your mission this week is all about the crawler transporter and how it transports our mobile launcher, rocket, and spacecraft to the launch pad. Can you give me a sneak peek at what you're up to? Thanks for telling us all about Exploration Ground Systems, Daniel. That was super cool. And yeah, I can definitely give you and everyone else the inside scoop on this week's mission. Daniel guessed it. Remember that giant crawler I was talking about earlier? Well, this week, it's your turn to design and operate a crawler of your own that can safely move a huge object. Need some inspiration? Check this out. You're watching a time-lapse video of our mobile launcher rolling out of the iconic vehicle assembly building atop the behemoth crawler transporter. Originally used to move the Saturn V rocket from the vehicle assembly building, or VAB, to the launch pad, the crawlers have since been used to do the exact same thing for the space shuttle, and they recently underwent extensive maintenance to ensure they're ready for the next chapter in human spaceflight. At a blistering top speed of one mile per hour, these workhorses have each put in over 3,400 miles in no more than four mile increments. And being this massive, they only get about 32 feet per gallon. But don't worry, they're hybrids. You can see as it rolls by the driver station just above that first set of tracks. We'll actually stop in to check out the view the driver gets in a few minutes. Right now you're seeing this at about seven times normal speed. And this is regular speed. There's a reason we call it the crawler. To give you a little perspective on the weight, you see what we call shoes that make up the tracks at each corner? Each of the eight tracks has 57 shoes, and each shoe weighs a ton, literally one ton. I'll let you do the math on how much weight for just the shoes. You're about to get a one-of-a-kind, never-before-seen immersive view as the crawler will roll right over us. Watch your head. Since 1965, we've relied on a nearly identical pair of these crawlers, the largest tracked vehicles in the world. Weighing in at over 6 million pounds each, these monsters are able to haul the more than 11 million pound mobile launcher that's being carried as we speak, along with the 5.75 million pound Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft from the VAB to the pad. Here inside one of two driver seats for the crawler. You can see the actual driving is pretty simple. A small wheel for direction and a knob for speed. We're currently parked outside Launch Complex 39B where the crawler has already set the mobile launcher down in place ahead on the mound. Because of its size, we never turn the crawler around. We move forward to the pad, then move the driver to the other driver station on the opposite corner, driving backward toward the VAB. This thing is so large, you could fit a professional baseball diamond on top. So now that you've seen the crawler in action, I hope you're pumped up and ready to take on your next mission. My friend Dennis is back to tell you all about it and get you going. Hey Zach, it's great to be back here to talk about the path to the pad. Did you see how big that crawler was? This is going to be an awesome mission. Let's dive right in. Can you remember a time that you had to move something really big and heavy? I bet it wasn't easy, and you probably needed some help. Maybe you used a wheelbarrow or a wagon, and it probably still felt pretty heavy. 
Now imagine if you had to move an entire rocket and a launch pad too. That's what NASA has to do to prepare for launching Artemis 1. You had a chance to see how they do it using something a lot bigger than a wagon, the crawler. Grab your engineering design notebook and write down the top three problems our friends at NASA must think about when they're moving the rocket. While you're at it, you can think about a couple of other questions too. How could you move a large and heavy rocket? What factors should you consider when transporting a big object? Maybe consider the speed or how to make careful turns. All right, now that your brain is in gear, it's your turn to design a vehicle or device that makes moving large and heavy objects much easier. Create something that can lift and move large objects, like a rocket, safely. Make sure you think about how you'll control the way the device moves and ensure that the objects you're transporting are not damaged. What do you need to design and hold the size and weight of the object? How will you keep it from moving or falling? Remember, this is a prototype or a model, so it doesn't actually need to be at full scale to move a large object. Brainstorm and sketch out your ideas in your engineering and design notebook. Identify the object you want to move. Build, test, and rebuild your model to make it better. Don't be afraid to try new ideas. If it doesn't work, it's okay. You can try something new just like NASA does. Are you ready to accept this mission? I know you're gonna come up with some awesome solutions and I can't wait to check them out. Thanks for having me, Zach, and good luck with the rest of your missions. Thanks, Dennis, and thanks everyone for joining us. Now run, don't crawl, to your design engineering notebooks and start thinking. Oh, and don't forget, we want to see your creations, so remember to submit your work on the LEGO Education community or post on social media with hashtag build to launch. Your build could show up in our next mission briefing. We'll see you next week.